Is the Apple Watch Ultra really worth $800 or should you just get the Series 8 instead? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna answer by comparing everything from the design, the sizes, the new display, the battery life, the new speakers and microphones, exclusive features, and more. Now, let's be honest, guys. I think most people that are gonna be buying this watch are not crazy ultra runners. Uh, climbers or divers, even though some of them will. That is such an amazing graphic here, showing off that you want to be adventurous with it. But I think most people just want something new. The Apple Watch has been similar for so long, we finally have a change, and of course, the better battery life. Now, it's cool that they switched up the packaging. It's still split like that. All right, we got it opened up right here, and... Woo! Oh, it's big. <laughs> that is... Pretty big, yeah. that is pretty big. Oh man. All right, let's get this bad boy out of here. Okay, that's a little heavier than I thought. Is it? This titanium is supposed to be light. Oh, <laughs> it definitely has some weight to this thing. I looked it up and it is almost 60% heavier than my Series 8 large Apple Watch. And you know what, I think it's probably heavier than this whole setup with my Pataka carbon fiber band that is super lightweight. Let's feel this. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Vadim, I think it is heavier overall. That is crazy. All right, you know what? Let me go ahead and try it on. Apple said that the Ultra is compatible with previous watch bands, including the Series 8. So hopefully this is gonna be nice and lightweight. Let's go ahead and try it on. Thankfully, this thing has a magnetic clasp. There you go. I definitely feel the weight, but it's not too bad. Maybe the watch band is helping because it's made from real carbon fiber instead of plastic with a thin sheet or fake painted. So it weighs almost nothing. If you guys like this, you guys could check it out. I'll link it down below. Uh, but the next thing I'm noticing is just that size difference. Not only that, this thing is thick. Vadim, do you see that? I mean, it's massive. This right? thing is thick on my wrist. I wanna see them side by side. Let me grab the loop. Uh, we also have the charger. It is a braided cable now. The Ultra is the only one that has that, so that's nice. I got the green Alpine loop, but I really wanted the trail one. They just sold out insanely fast. Let's pull it out. Oh, that color looks a little different in person. This thing has a little bit of stretch, and of course you have this clasp here. Let's pop this thing on here. It has these bumps that you gotta pull up, and then we'll pull this thing through. Come on here. All right, and look at that, guys. My goodness. Not only is it larger, obviously, but that thickness difference is pretty substantial. Now, I also bought an Ultra for my wife. She's been using an older one for a while. She's very active. I think it's gonna be too big and too thick for her. Now, before I set it up, I noticed a couple of things. Obviously, we have a flat screen with this raised kind of edge that sticks out. Makes the watch look a little thinner than it actually is, but this edge is sharp. I was like, what is this on the top corner? And it's actually my fingernail getting scratched off. You do not want to put this on your iPhone's screen or have it touch anything that you don't want to scratch up. Here's my old donor phone. Let's see this. Oh my goodness, you just hear that scratching going on. The Series 8 has these rounded edges, super smooth that meets with the glass. This thing will not scratch your phone, your furniture, or anything else. Now some people mentioned that even though the Ultra has a larger screen, you don't see more. So here I adjusted both to the same text size and did the search and as you guys could see on the Ultra, we see the open button where on the Series 8, you actually have to scroll down to be able to see it and press it. One thing I noticed is that the Ultra's bezel is a lot more noticeable because it has a flat screen instead of the Series 8, which curves the glass all the way to the side where it meets the aluminum. But the plus side to that is that the Ultra has this raised lip around the screen, which is gonna protect the screen from hitting objects. And this thing also has a sapphire display, whereas the Series 8 aluminum uses Ion X glass, which sounds cool, but it's not that durable. Both my wife and my son have scratches in this screen. And of course, the aluminum also also scratches easily compared to the titanium here, which is a lot more durable. And that's probably why we only have a single color that is unpainted titanium, just so you don't scratch that off, which I already have a small scratch on the aluminum here and the glass of the Series 8. So in general, the Ultra is a lot more durable. Looking at the backs now, you guys see those screws uh, instead of just having glue applied. And with that, we have double the water resistance. It's just a more extreme sport watch 
overall. And looking at the sides now, instead of just having this digital crown that's thin, we have this fat one and we have this crown guard all around it so you don't accidentally bump it. The crown has these deeper grooves and one thing I noticed is that the haptics do feel stronger on the Ultra. With that, we have our button here that protrudes so it's easy to press even if you have gloves on. One thing that's a first on an Apple Watch is these bands right below the top of the display. The previous Apple Watches didn't have that at all and this new Ultra has dual GPS which is awesome. I wish I could give that to my kids because sometimes I'll open up Find My and I'll see this wide circle or I will see a closer circle but then it hops around and I thought my kid left somewhere from their friend's house but then it updated back there. So having the extra accuracy with the dual GPS is really nice. And another first is that additional action button on that left hand side in international orange. Uh, if you press that, it can give you a bunch of different things. I set mine up to be a flashlight. So as soon as I press it, bam, that is getting bright right there. You can also change it to a variety of different things like working out, using waypoints and more. Now, if you hold it down, it's gonna give you a pop-up for your shortcut. And then we have the sign right here. So let's go ahead and test that out. Interesting. All right, it's getting louder each time. Wow. Wow. I gotta say, it's not as loud as I thought it would be. Apple did say that it will carry very far, so maybe it's the frequency, but it doesn't sound that loud. Now, if you guys look, the speaker grill on here is pretty massive compared to this little slot. So let's play something and hear how it sounds. That is a lot louder on the Ultra. So if you're in a noisy environment, you're taking a phone call, it's gonna be a lot easier to hear. Now with that, let's cover the microphones. The Ultra has three of them, one on the left side and two on the right, whereas the Series 8 only has one. Let's go ahead and do a test. This is the microphone quality of the Apple Watch Series 8, and this is the quality of the Ultra's three microphones in a room that doesn't have too much noise. Now I wanna turn on some background noise from a cafe just to mimic being in a louder environment. This is the Series 8 microphone quality if you're in a noisy environment. And this is the Apple Watch Ultra's microphones in a noisy environment. We took a listen to the recordings and I have to be honest, I think that the Series 8 sounds better in both scenarios. You have a little bit more clarity, a little bit more bass in the microphones. I don't know how Apple chooses which one to use. Maybe you use the one on the other side. And maybe there'd be a bigger difference if you're, say, in the wind and the other mic will kick on. But overall, I was expecting a bigger difference. Now, the other thing we haven't mentioned is the brightness of the displays. The Series 8 is rated for 1,000 nits maximum compared to 2,000 for the Ultra. You guys can see that's a big difference when I open up the flashlight app. Now with normal usage, you're not really gonna see a difference because the Ultra is capped, just like the newer iPhones. But if you're outside and you're in direct lighting, you do notice the extra brightness and that can come in handy. And now I wanna talk about battery life, which is the biggest reason why I want the Ultra. Now not everybody needs 36 hours of battery life, which is double what the Series 8 gives you. But one thing you have to think about is that two, three years down the line, the battery life degrades on these Apple Watches and my current Apple watch doesn't even make it through a full day. Every night now, before I go to bed, it dies on me. And that's not even counting doing a long workout or when you're tracking things, just because the battery is degraded. So having that extra capacity is great, not only to not have to charge every day or go on trips and doing long workouts, but just the fact that it's gonna last you a lot longer. Now, as far as prices, a lot of people say the Ultra is double the cost of the Series 8, and that is simply not true. First off, the larger size 45 millimeter Series 8, which competes with it, well, that's more expensive than the base. And then if you add cellular, which the Ultra has, that makes it even more expensive. So the difference is only $270, which is still a lot, but it's not double the price. Now with that, the Ultra uses sapphire glass as well. So if you wanna get a durable Series 8 that won't scratch the screen and the aluminum won't scratch, then you have to spend even more money. So now if you're getting one that has a better band, anything other than the cheapest one, you're spending 800 bucks the same price as the Ultra. So with that said, which one should you buy? Honestly, I think that if you are okay with the larger size and this styling, 
you should absolutely get the Ultra because you get a lot better battery life, a nicer display, a lot more extra features. For example, uh, the depth sensor that I didn't mention earlier, the action button you have, the better GPS, and all of the other things compared to the Series 8, which is an older design now. It will be updated in the future. And especially if you're gonna upgrade to cellular or stainless steel, the Ultra is a killer value. Now, who should buy the Series 8? Well, obviously we have the size and weight difference, but with that, if you like the nice, sleek design that doesn't look super sporty, if you want something that's gonna be thin on your wrist, if you wanna have the choice of colors and materials, and of course, if you don't need the cellular and you wanna buy aluminum anyways, it's a much lower price point. But with that, I would say just go ahead and pick up a Series 7, because there's very little differences. You can buy those deeply discounted. So you guys can go ahead and check out that video right there, our comparison of the 8 versus the 7 and the SE. Click that circle above to subscribe to see my follow-up review of the Ultra and if I'm going to stick with it long-term. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.